Help support Name Explain by liking this video, leaving a comment and subscribing to the channel. Hello all, I've been away recently so I haven't had the chance to write a new video for today. So instead of leaving you all with no video, I thought it'd be fun if I did an animated extract from my book, The Origin of Names, Words and Everything in Between. It's been over a year since it was initially published, there may be some of you who weren't watching back then when the book first came out. And it's now available not only as original hardback edition, but in paperback, ebook and even as an audiobook. So however you consume your books, there'll be some way you can enjoy it too. Also with Christmas fast approaching, it could be a gift you could ask for from a loved one. You can even make an awesome stocking filler for anyone in your life who enjoys finding out about fun trivia and facts. Today we're going to look into 5 entries from the landmarks section of the book. Landmarks of course being the amazing sights, whether natural or man made, that grace our planet. In fact, why then introduce you to the concept of landmarks with the introduction I wrote for them in the book itself? Is there anything us humans love doing more than having a good stare at things? I know for myself that I've spent a good while mildly staring at pretty useless things and felt sufficiently satisfied. So you can only imagine how long I've spent staring at amazing things. Sometimes something is so amazing to stare at that people from all over the world come to stare at it, to touch it, to take photos with it, to buy tacky souvenirs of it. These are of course the landmarks of the world. Some are formed by nature and some are formed by the hands of humans. But all, well at least the ones in this book, have interesting names. Have you ever just stopped and thought for a minute just what a ridiculous name Big Ben is? It's the kind of name you'll give a prize winning bull or something. Yet the name Big Ben belongs to the most iconic landmark in the United Kingdom. But what exactly am I talking about when I say Big Ben? Well if you're thinking of the whole tower with the clock face on it then you are wrong. This is a commonly known thing here in the UK but I shall explain it for the unfamiliar. Big Ben is actually the name for the biggest bell that rings along with the corresponding time of day. The actual tower that houses Big Ben did not have an official name when it was first built in 1844. From 1844 until 2012, the tower was simply called the Clock Tower, yet in 2012 an official title was given to it, Elizabeth Tower, to commemorate the Diamond Jubilee of Queen Elizabeth II. So now that we've cleared up the whole Big Ben Bell not building debacle, we can look into the actual name itself of Big Ben. There's a couple ideas as to how the bell got that silly name. One is that it was named after Sir Benjamin Hall, Welsh civil engineer and politician. He was a larger and well-beloved man in the houses of parliament, playing a big role in the construction and installation of the bell itself. It makes a lot of sense for the bell to be named after him, but there's another idea that it was named after the popular English boxing champion of the time, Ben Caunt, who was also nicknamed Big Ben. Whether it was named after a politician or a boxer, Big Ben is the name that has stood the test of time. It's a rather silly name from a rather silly country. Now, Mount Rushmore isn't exactly a mountain, it's something known as a batholith. And without this becoming a geology book, that means it's the kind of rock formation that most characteristically has a side that is more or less flat. Well, flat compared to a normal mountain. The kind of flat surface that'd be perfect for sculpting enormous faces into. Yet, before the presidents got their faces on there, the batholith was still called Mount Rushmore. In fact, this is a kind of Big Ben Tower vs Bell scenario. The batholith is called Mount Rushmore, and the sculpture on the side of it is called the Mount Rushmore National Memorial so maybe not as confusing as Big Ben. Mount Rushmore was named not after the person who first discovered the mountain, yes for ease I'm just calling it a mountain now, nor the person who first reached its peak. Mount Rushmore was named after a New York based lawyer, Charles Rushmore. Charles was in the land in 1884, hired by some men of the Black Hills to settle the dispute over tin mines. Years later in 1925, as plans for the memorial were falling into place, Charles Rushmore sent a letter to Duan Robinson, the man who conceived the idea of the memorial, explaining how his name ended up being used to name the mountain. In his letter, he explained how one day during his time working in the Black Hills, he gazed upon the mountain of granite rock that rose above the neighbouring peaks, and when he asked the locals, who he had become friendly with, what it was called, they explained that it was nameless, but they named it there and then, Rushmore Peak. From there, the name went from Rushmore Peak to Rushmore Mountain to Rushmore Rock, with Mount Rushmore finally being settled upon. Yet, in 1925, when this letter was sent, construction hadn't even started yet. It wouldn't be till 1927 the mountainside would first start being carved. Initially, Duane Robinson wanted it carved on some granite pillars known as the Needles, but sculptor Guts and Borglum felt they wouldn't have enough to support the carvings, so Rushmore was chosen instead. 
While it might get overshadowed by Everest, being the second best is still pretty good though, right? But how did such a feat of nature end up with such a human, unnatural, almost robotic name? K2 is located on the China-Pakistan border, and once again we have a British surveyor to thank for its name. This time it's a man by the name of TJ Montgomery, who was exploring the Karakara mountain range, and as he surveyed mountains, he numerically named them, adding a K before their name to reference the fact that he was in the Kakakura mountain range, with K2 being the second mountain he recorded, and it was that name that stuck around to this very day. However, there are other names for the mountain too. Like Everest, the mountain has names in its native countries too. In China, the mountain is called Shogir, which means white goddess, and in Pakistan, it is called Shigali, meaning tall majestic. Yet one of the names the mountain is most known by is the Savage Mountain, due to the huge amount of fatalities that have occurred while trying to traverse the mountain. There have only been around 300 successful summits of K2. While that might sound like a lot, over 7,000 people have reached the summit of Everest. K2 has taken over 70 lives, the second most of any mountain, so it's the second tallest, the second most fatal, and second to be surveyed. Poor K2 always getting silver. And yes, there is a K1, and a K3, K4, and K5 for that matter. Yet, K2 is the one that has gone down in infamy. The Taj Mahal was not only constructed by the hands of 20,000 workers, but also with the assistance of a thousand elephants. All those hands and trunks went into building one of the most impressive and beautiful buildings on this planet. In fact, it was deemed so beautiful that one legend tells us that the architects had their hands cut off once the building was complete, so they couldn't construct anything more beautiful. Its construction was finished in 1653, making it over 350 years old. Unfortunately, in this time, a clear etymology has been lost, but some ideas and myths live on as as to how this palace got its name. One of the more popular stories is that the building was constructed as a mausoleum for one of the wives of Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan, this wife being Mumtaz Mahal, who died giving birth to their 14th child. She was Shah's third and favourite wife, said to be of extreme beauty and forever devoted to her emperor husband. Her death hit him hard. With a broken heart and an empire's fingertips, the Taj Mahal was constructed for her, as an ode to his love for her, with the mausoleum still bearing her name today. The second story behind the building's name is isn't as romantic, or polygamous for that matter. It's also thought the name comes from the Persian language, in that the word Taj means crown and Mahal means palace, so Taj Mahal together would mean the crown palace. Like I said, it's nowhere near as exciting. Quickly going back to the myth that the architect's hands were cut off after the completion of the building, what's interesting about this is there was a similar tale to this in Russia, where legend has it that Ivan the Terrible blinded the architects of St. Basil's Cathedral, so they wouldn't create anything more beautiful either. While not about names, I just thought I'd mention it here, if any of you are considering a career in architecture, I'm sure the salary and pension is great. Just maybe consider that the loss of body parts could be a real possibility. While the pyramids that cover Egypt are the ones we think of most when thinking of pyramids, there are actually many dotted around the world. There are Aztec and Mayan pyramids that live in South America, one in Rome built around 12 BC as a tomb for a man called Gaius Cestius Apollo, and even one in France, though the one in France is made of glass in 1989, so maybe it doesn't quite count. Yet the pyramid I want to talk about is in Egypt, that of course being the Great Pyramid of Giza, thought to have been constructed between 2580 and 2560 BC. The pyramids of Egypt are built as tombs for great people, with the Pyramid of Giza thought to be for the Pharaoh Khufu. Of course the Egyptians didn't write the way we do today, they of course used the famous hieroglyphics to write. Hieroglyphs are not perfectly understood to us today, our knowledge of them are fragments. While some feel that Egyptians did use glyphs for vowels, others do not, leading us to guess exactly how some of these names were pronounced. It's believed that the hieroglyphs that went into the world of the pyramid in ancient Egypt were Mr, which is thought to have been pronounced as Mer. This name of Mer is believed to mean place of ascension, as it's where pharaohs were placed in death to ascend to the next stage in life. The, the actual word pyramid itself is thought to have come from the Greeks. It's thought to either come from the Greek word pilamidos, meaning fire in the middle, or Greek pilamis, which meant a kind of wheat cake that peaked at the top. The structures of Egypt remind the Greeks of these cakes. Of course, with a structure as old as the Great Pyramid of Giza, at times we can only guess at its etymology. However, we do know that at the time, the Egyptians didn't call it the Great Pyramid of Giza. That's a name that's been given to it once the ancient Egyptian world was over. We simply call it this as it's the oldest, tallest, and well greatest of all the pyramids in the Giza complex by the city of Giza. The city of Giza was founded in 642 AD, thousands of years after the pyramids had been built. The name of this city comes from the Arabic er Gizhar, meaning beside the high, referring to the pyramids that beside the city. It's what the ancient Egyptians would have called it Akhet Khufu, meaning horizon of Khufu, as it was there that Pharaoh Khufu was laid to rest to reach the horizon. 
This was just 5 of the 10 landmarks that we cover in the book, so if you want to find out how more landmarks got their names, as well as how a huge array of other things ended up with their names, then grab yourself a copy of my book, The Origin of Names, Words and Everything in Between. There'll be an Amazon link down below, so go check it out and grab yourself or someone else a copy. There's definitely still enough time to pick up a copy before the big day. Thank you to all my patrons who support Name Explain on a monthly basis. Name Explain depends on small monthly donations from fans like you to help keep the channel running. Just a small amount of $2 a month helps in a huge way, grants you patron exclusive Name Explain extras, and gets your name here with all these awesome people. Thank you. Hello all and thank you so much for reaching the end of the video. Stick around and check out another video and subscribe to today on all things Name Explain. You can follow myself on Twitter at NameExplainYT. Follow me there and tweet the name Charlie at me so I know you came from this message. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again thank you all so much.